Dear friends, for two years now, we have been witnessing a global coup d'etat in which a financial and ideological elite has succeeded in seizing control of part of the national government, public and private institutions, the media, the judiciary, politician and religious leaders. All of these, without distinction, have become enslaved to these new masters who ensure power, money and social affirmation to their accomplices. Fundamental rights, which up until yesterday were presented as inviolable, have been trampled underfoot in the name of an emergency, today a health emergency, tomorrow an ecological emergency, and after that an internet emergency. This global coup d'etat deprives citizens of any possibility of defense since the legislative, executive, and judicial powers are complicit in the violation of law, justice, and the purpose for which they exist. It is a global coup d'etat because this criminal attack against citizens extends to the whole world with every very rare exception. It is a world war where the enemies are all of us, even those who unwittingly have not yet understood the significance of what is happening. It is a war fought not with weapons, but with illegitimate rules wicked economic policies and intolerable limitation of natural rights. Supranational organizations, financed in large measure by the conspirator of this coup d'etat, are interfering in the government of individual nations and in the lives, relationships, and health of billions of people. They are doing it for money, certainly, but even more. So in order to centralize power, so as to establish a planetary dictatorship, it is the great reset of the World Economic Forum, the Agenda 2030 of the United Nations. It is the plan of the new world order in which a universal republic enslaves everyone. It is necessary to form an international anti-globalist alliance which gathers all those who want to oppose the dictatorship, who have no intention of becoming slaves to a faceless power. If the attack is global, the defense must also be global. I call upon rulers, politicians and religious leaders, intellectuals and all people of goodwill, inviting them to unite in an alliance that launches an anti-globalist manifesto, refuting point by point the errors and deviation of this, this dystopia of the new world order. This anti-globalist alliance will have to bring together the nation that intend to escape the infernal yoke of tyranny and affirm their own sovereignty, 
forming agreements of mutual collaboration with nations and people who share their principle and the common yearning for freedom, justice, and goodness. It will have to denounce the crimes of the elite, identify those responsible, denounce them to international tribunals, and limit their excessive power and harmful influence. It will have to prevent the action of the lobbies, above all by fighting against the corruption of state officials and those who work in the information industry, and by freezing the capital used to destabilize the social order. In nations where the government has subservient to the elite, they will be able to establish popular resistance movement and communities of national liberation, including representatives of all sectors of society who propose a radical reform of politics inspired by the common good and firmly opposed to, neo, to the neo Malthusian project of the globalist agenda. My appeal is made to political leaders and to rulers who care about good of their citizens. Leaving aside the old system of political parties and the logic imposed by a system enslaved to power and money, disrupting the old system and putting aside the hostility that are designed by the enemies of humanity in the name of divide et tempera. We do not accept our adversaries' rules because they are made precisely to prevent us from reacting and organizing an effective and incisive opposition. I see the hand Let line. us found this anti-globalist alliance. Let us give it is a simple and clear program. And let us free humanity from a totalitarian regime that brings together in itself the horrors of the worst dictatorships of all time. If we continue to delay, if we do not understand the threat that looms over us all, if we do not react by organizing ourselves into a firm and courageous resistance, this infernal regime that is establishing itself everywhere will not be able to be stopped. C'è chi ritiene di poter avere un rapporto personale, diretto, immediato con Gesù Cristo al di fuori della comunione e della meditazione della Chiesa. Sono tentazioni pericolose, sono tentazioni dannose, sono, come diceva il grande Paolo VI, dicotomie assurde. Può succedere che qualche fratello o qualche sorella ci faccia problema o ci dia scandalo, ma il Signore ha affidato il suo messaggio di salvezza a delle persone umane, a tutti noi. A dei testimoni e, die already. ed è nei nostri fratelli e nelle nostre sorelle con il loro dono e il loro limite che ci viene incontro e ci fa riconoscere. E questo significa appartenere alla Chiesa.